game is going on. Minnesota, what's that? What, what do you, give me your take on that. My initial reaction was this is terrible and this is going to be, this is bad for, for law enforcement. This is bad for all the work that we're trying to do. But in, for that specific incident, I, w I wanted to wait before I, I judged it yeah. and, or prejudged it based yeah. just upon the limited amount of information that I had. Yeah. It's the same thing with Baton Rouge. You know, I saw that, I was like, look, what are those guys doing? They're on top of the guy and they just shoot him. Man. And then, then I, I started thinking, what could possibly justify that? Mm -hmm. I, I heard somebody just, say gun, though. Yeah. You know, and but, then, and, then you find out that call, the call was there was a man there with a gun. But then let me stop you here. I mean, yeah. I, let me interrupt you. So uh, from the past three, four years of, it seems like countless African-American men dying. So now you put me in that predicament out on air, right there on that, and four officers on me. What do you think, uh, what do you think I'm doing? I think I'm fighting for my life right now. Wow. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Those are perspectives that I'm hoping the police, that we can, we can someday sit down at a table and say, we can hear each other. Yeah. Sometimes we walk up with misperceptions. If I see you coming at me with a uniform and I don't know you, and that's pretty much most of our neighborhoods, they're policed by people we don't know. So first of all, I, there can't be a dialogue there. The dialogue is already broken. Um, because I don't know you, you know, as a policeman, uh, you know, like I said, you know, I was talking to a, a police officer. You just get out the car sometime and just walk. Nobody, nobody's going to shoot you. <laughs> That's the furthest thing from somebody's mind. I, I do think that we have, a, you know what I mean? You know, thankfully we have it better here in Beaver County. You know what I mean? We don't, we don't, we, have, we haven't had that kind of, but, but with so much news and yeah. so much thing, you know, I think fears are heightened. And I guess I'm, I'm concerned that that kind of thing doesn't come to be recounted. Right. Um, w w you know, I know you've been doing some things to prevent that. Uh, can you tell us, you know, again, you know, about that? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, thanks for asking that. Uh, and before I answer it, let me just point out that we did have, just recently, in the last month, mm. it was two, three white police officers in Beaver Falls used force on a black man. They shot him. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now the black man had a gun, he mm -hmm. pointed at them, mm -hmm. and he shot them. And there wasn't riots, there wasn't mm -hmm. problems, mm -hmm. there wasn't no mm -hmm. trouble at all. Mm -hmm. And I attribute that, that there is a good relationship here in about Beaver County. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that could all change, right, you know, right, right, right. like the next right. minute, right. Mm -hmm. but especially given the current circumstances. But I think there's mechanisms in place already in Beaver County to prevent there being uh, the widespread backlash that you're seeing nationwide. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. some of the things that we're doing with the Fraternal Order of Police is um, two years ago, in July, I took over as a president of the lodge. Mm -hmm. And I remember it like mm -hmm. in August of 2014, watching the news of what happened in Ferguson and the reaction from the community. And I remember sitting there thinking, this changes everything. Mm -hmm. I reached out to President uh, Willie Salas. Right. Mm -hmm. and we had meetings. We did some community meetings. We got some information out there to the community. Um, Mr. Owens, you had your event in Aliquippa, and you invited me to that, right. and I attended that. That was a great event. And we had uh, the students in, in Aliquippa High School. And I, I got to sit at a table with, with eight uh, black students from Aliquippa high school age, and we, right. we talked about all these issues. Right. They, they told me how they felt. I gave them my perspective on it, and, and you know, we sat there and we laughed and we had a good old time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You yeah. did the, the role-playing thing up on yeah. the stage. Right. Uh, and I think that is what needs to happen. What it, what it boils down to is police officers need to put themselves in black people's shoes. Black people need to kind of put themselves in a police officer's shoes, but we need to have a mutual understanding. Right. You know, they say, there's, a, there's an expression, when you point your finger at somebody, there's three, mm -hmm. three fingers pointing back at you, mm -hmm. okay? Police officers need to have a better understanding about unconscious bias, right. prejudice, what the perception is from the black community about police officers, whether it's right or, or not. And I'm, I've asked you, and I'll say it again, comply in the street, argue in court. If police officers get compliance, there's no need ever to use any force at all. Mm -hmm. When a police officer says you're under arrest and a person puts their hands behind their back, they're gonna get handcuffed and they're gonna go and it's all gonna get sorted out in court. But 
if a police officer says, you're under arrest, and they say, no, I'm not under arrest, why am I under arrest? I don't have to explain it to you. Mm -hmm. A police officer does not have to, to be a roadside lawyer and mm -hmm. explain it. Mm -hmm. No, you're under arrest, put your hands behind your back. And it goes south from there, and you've seen it. Traffic mm -hmm. stops for running stop signs have turned into deadly force situations just because of people, the attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about that example from, from the Midland meeting where the black female, she said that she was pulled over by the white officer and he asked her for a driver's license. And she said, I'll get, I'm not giving you my license until you tell me why you stopped me. Mm -hmm. Her police officer doesn't have to tell you. And he said, I'll tell you after you give me your license. Well, here we are. Yeah. Someone needs to give. Yeah. Someone needs to give. Or maybe yeah. both need to give. Yeah. And that's yeah. What, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I think there needs to be some community training in terms of what your rights actually are, if you have any. You yes. know what I mean? So what you can you can question or what you can say and, and how you ought to conduct yourself. I I, 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 I agree with that. But yeah. uh, but I think too though that uh, we talk about the relationship. I think you'll get the benefit of the doubt if there is a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you know, sure. if people in the community know, you know, if they know you, if they know that person, and they know that, you know, he's, you know, no, nah, that doesn't sound like him. He's a good guy. I don't think he, you know what I mean? I don't think he would have purposely did this or that, you know, because I, I've seen him. You know, he's good with kids. He's whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he's always talking to us. He's, he stops. He gets out of the car. He's, you know what I mean? We know him. You know, I, that would that would buy a, a lot. Sure. You know, that, that would it change really a lot of things. I agree 100%. Yeah. And that's the it advantage really I think we have here in Beaver County. Yeah. Is we're, a little we, more. we have a big county, but we have a whole yeah. bunch of small, tightly knit communities. Right. And most, most of our officers were born and raised here in Beaver County. Mm -hmm. Went to Beaver County schools. Right. Involved in the communities right. already, whether it's because coaching their kids, right. going to church, whatever it is. That, I'm sure you might not know all the officers as many as you like, but I'm sure you know yeah. a handful of the officers in Alcoba. And if yeah. you had a problem, no, I, with I, I, one I know maybe know. one of them. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Two. They're, they're pretty, I know two. They're of them. pretty new now. I know they're, two. They're, they're, and, pretty, they're pretty new. And that and that's um, I, I don't want to point fingers or nothing like that, but that you know, me born and raised in Alcoba, I, I think I should know more than half of the force. Yeah, on, a lot on, of their guys just retired and they didn't bring in well, some new guys. Yeah, from, it, but, yeah uh, that's it. And you know, I think all, you know, like Ms. Swanson said, I, I think more of our officers should be uh, familiar to us um, when, we're, when, we're, when we're picking them guys right. or, right. you know, them guys yeah. come entering into our community because they have to know how to, uh, we, we culturally, we have to know how to interact. Let, let, me throw, let me throw this in, too, before we wrap up. Uh, yeah. I think, too, we've got to do a better job of recruiting uh, African-American yeah. uh, police officers. I yes. think a lot of a lot of things would, you know, a lot of tension would decrease. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying it's a panacea, but I, but I think it would help. And some of the understanding, you know, reading the cultural cues and, and all those kind of things yeah. uh, uh, would, would decrease some of the tension. Yeah. So I think that, that's something perhaps we need to talk about another time. Sure. Yes. All right, we want to thank Damien for allowing us uh, into his space at Barbershop Talk. Uh, Damien's is in Ambridge. And that's it for this episode of Barbershop Talk. See new episodes every Thursday at timesonline.com slash barbershop talk. Remember, you can email us at barbershoptalk at timesonline.com. We'll see you next time at the barbershop.